I, I, Hello. I, I, I've just got, I feel like Alan Partridge every time that happens. I mean, I think it's not just the name. I have similarities. Um, right, quick introduction. Good morning, everyone. It is 9.36 on a Saturday morning. Yes, I would love to be a TV presenter. Uh, this is Paul Whitewick. He is from a fantastic YouTube channel that he's going to tell us a bit more about in a moment. We are meant to have Matt King from Sales Change with us. Um, and I could gloss over and say we don't we hope he's OK, but actually I know he's in Ikea right now in Southampton. <laughs> um, he did say he was going to be joining us, so I'm hoping he may pop up any moment now and uh, get involved. But this is part of our Meet the Speakers as we build up to Digital Circus Live because we want you to kind of get to know them and know why we're talking to them and what hopefully they can help you with as part of our learning session. Um, so what I think as part of the learning session, sorry, of the Digital Circus Live. Um, so, Paul, Paul, will Rebecca be joining us at the Digital Circus Live? Uh, or will it just be No, you? unfortunately. Oh, um, yeah. On the 18th. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's yes. okay. That's okay. Well, I just thought, so, um, yeah, so Paul and Rebecca, off of Paul and Rebecca Whitewick, go and search on YouTube. I'll even, may even shut the link up in a second, um, are going to be there. And they're hosting a fab keynote, which is going to be about, basically, their adventures on YouTube. Um, but that's enough about me. Paul, could you introduce yourself, what you do? And yeah, t tell us as much as you want. And then we're, we'll have a bit of a chat for 10 minutes. Yeah, sounds good. So um, yeah, my name is Paul Whitewick, as you can probably see. Um, so myself and my wife, Rebecca, we made a YouTube channel and no agenda on it whatsoever. Just sort of put a couple of little videos out on the sort of abandoned railways and old canals. And all of a sudden, people who started liking what we did, which was a huge surprise to us. Um, so we, we did it regularly. Um, so, yeah, so we're on YouTube. We're Paul and Rebecca Whitewick. And we make um, short films about old railways, old canals, old Roman roads, anything that sort of, um, I guess it centres around a route, if you will. So there's always a route involved in how people interacted with the landscape. Um, so there's a big history element. There's a big um, railway element. And yeah, so so we make weekly videos on YouTube. That's kind of us in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, and I love it. And I, I, for those who don't know, I've known Paul since I reckon I was four and a half, five years old. We both went to Anton Infants Junior and Winton School together in Andover. And what I think that's going to allow me to do, Paul, if this is OK, is going to be blunt for a second. Of right. Course. I, th I think it's fair to say, unless you are avidly into what you and Rebecca talk about, that your YouTube channel could be perceived as slightly boring. Right. <laughs> the reality is very different. So I, I absolutely sit there watching your videos and loving them. You know, you know, this is genuine, right? It's not just because I know you. Um, and we find them fascinating. You fill them full of kind of historical knowledge, humor. You two are likable and enjoyable to watch. And I think that's been a massive part of um, the growth of your YouTube channel. And, and yeah, and then the kind of following the adventure, because the, the big adventure that we sort of got involved in before lockdown what was what was that one but you've just come back on to because you went to hailing island didn't you what's uh, your yeah, big so, project yeah so it's a big project but it's also um almost like the tagline of the channel was every disused station and so yeah that's kind of how we we set out we, we thought we could sell it on the every disused station there at the time going back three or four years ago there was a couple called jeff and vicky and they did all the stations so they did active and they went and visited every, all the stations in the UK over a three month period. And we kind of thought, do you know what? Well, we kind of already do this, but on abandoned railways. So why don't we create this tagline, every disused station? Um, and it kind of caught on. Um, and yeah, going back to your point about the niche, it was very much, you know, you turn up at all these abandoned stations, all these abandoned places. And essentially you're looking at, a, at a, either an industrial estate or a housing estate. And there's nothing there. So you can't, you know, you can you can make a video and you can turn up at a housing estate and go, there was a railway here in 1865 and it closed in 1860. And you'd bore the, you know, the pants off of people. So we're very conscious of that. We're very conscious of the fact we're on YouTube. So you've got to make it entertaining. You've got to make it fun. You've got to um, tell a story. I and mean, as you say, we, we try and play off of each other and we try and make it fun for people to watch. We don't want to stand there and just point and say it opened in this year. There's one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you, you're yeah. going to turn up at housing estates, basically, or an industrial estate or somewhere. That's, there's no image there. There's no story to sell. So yeah. you really need to find the, the, the old railway 
a, a, a nice place to walk and show people and a story behind the line. What is the click? What's the, without using the, the, the word clickbait, but what is the clickbait? It's hugely important. Um, and for us, if you, you, you look at the million subscriber people, the Mr. Beasts of the world and all those sort of people, they're very clever people, very clever people. You know, the Casey Neistat who sell their channel on stories, the thumbnail to get you in and they keep you there. And that's kind of what we try to do in our niche little world of abandoned railways. Um, yeah, yeah, no, and and, I, and you do it very, very well. And I think that's, you know, YouTube have made you a trending channel and the growth is, and the growth of your subscriber count is there and your Patreon and your other supporters. And um, one of the things that we are hugely big on at Yellow Tuxedo, Emily and I, is, right, so we live in this world with a lot of small businesses. We try to encourage businesses to kind of make a shift on their marketing towards digital and grow what we call their digital visibility, their online presence. And and one of the many reasons we talk about that is the opportunity, and we mean financial mainly, but there are always other opportunities like collaboration, growing relationships, networking, and, you know, just fun and everything else that comes from doing these things. We're always talking about. Um, so we always try to actively encourage that. And that's one of the taglines for the Digital Circus Live. And I don't, I'm, this is not me trying to go spill your figures. That's not what I mean. But, uh, but I'm kind of going, what sort of opportunities have come from you? You know, just talk me through the fun and the adventure and perhaps, you know, a couple of the other things as well. Yeah. So, so when we started, we had no intention of doing anything financial. It was just a case of, we're going to just put a couple of fun videos up and see what happens. Um, and then we kind of fell into it, as I say, and, you know, it became a bit bigger and people started to watch. And all of a sudden, yeah, people started wanting to contribute. So now how can we contribute to so your, you know, to, yeah, you guys have got to buy a new camera. You guys got to buy microphones, everything that goes with it, it all adds up, whatever. Um, so we started a Patreon um, and we, we gained a good number on Patreon. And that was, it's as I think you were saying earlier, it's a very British thing not to sort of want to say, oh, well, help, help out the channel, support the channel. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a thing, yeah. And, and the opportunity comes up is, is definitely the patron and you want to then try and build a community around it and sort of reward the people for for helping you which we do um and then of course there's the, the, the youtube adverts um you know the pre-adverts the mid rolls and of course they they bring a level of income but it's not huge compared to the, the patronage that you would get um and what else yes we we've had a few insert adverts as well but again we don't try and have those all the time it's you know, once a month maybe because otherwise it's a bit too much but uh, those are the three main sort of revenue streams i would suggest if that's the answer you're yeah. after <laughs> yeah 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 no but but also like just from you know there's um there's a guy we chat to and we talk about quite a lot called trevor young and uh, we've done some collaborative work together and he 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 quoted someone else but i can never remember who he quotes so i attribute this quote to him but it's not his um and it's about oh because he introduced it to us it's about opening the door and other doors coming along and and whatever you want to write on the label of those doors and whether they're you know opportunity fun adventure new people revenue and everything else but but that's such a big thing for me and uh you know we we always talk about and i get you started as a passion you know this is very very important you started as a passion project you wanted yeah. to make some films you wanted to share your hobby and and it's kind of shifted and uh, you know that shifts doesn't always work with everyone, but for you guys, it's working very, very well. And so coming at it from a business perspective is, is very different. You know, I am a business. I'm going to make videos. If, you're, if your business is painting, doing videos on disused railways may not work. But, um, mm. you know, there's for, for every channel like yours on um, YouTube, that's a passion project. There are channels about people doing plumbing. Jet, one of the ones yeah. we talk about yeah. all the two we talk about all the time there's a balloon company uh in totten in southampton actually not that far okay. from us totten or shirley and they have a very successful youtube channel tiktok instagram and yeah. you know digital is a massive part of their marketing and the yeah. other one is um i think they've got like fifty thousand subscribers on youtube they're a jet washing company out of bournemouth they jet wash patios and walls and everything else okay. and uh, i'm sure it's called bournemouth jet washing actually yeah, and, yeah. and you know they've got fifty thousand subscribers and they're doing very very well as it as a kind of direction for their marketing their online presence and yep. new revenue streams and opportunity that come from it so no absolutely um what do you think where do you see the future of your channel where do you see that going oh good question um 
Or I can I can ask a simpler question. How long is it going to take you to visit all of these disused railways? Oh, do you know what? Right. So we've got a um, we've got a, a a guy that sends us a spreadsheet. I don't know who he is, but he, uh, he's, he's, I think his handle is a hermit or whatever. And he sends us a spreadsheet every time we do an every disused station video because we don't just do those videos. Every time we do one of those videos, we <clears throat> tick off the number of stations. So it's a stations visited so far, etc. In the bottom of the, of the screen. And he, he's got this spreadsheet and he sends us it and he says, um, so far, your completion date of visiting all the stations is, and I think at the moment it's 2036 or something. <laughs> I love that. I yeah, love it's, that. It's, it's fantastic. It's really good. It, uh, yeah, it shows you how involved people get when you just put a little bit of stats. You put your stats in the corner, stations visited so far, how many you've got to go, because there's 6,800 abandoned stations in the UK alone, um, which is just an astronomical number. And we always see that as, we don't we don't really care if we don't ever tick them off that's not a we need to do this we need to do this it's just a thing and it's a thing that allows us to tell a story so we pick an, an old line which may have 10 stations on it and we think well it's only 10 stations that's you know not not very helpful in the grand challenge but the challenge isn't a challenge it's the challenge remains to tell the viewer a story so you're never there to say you know, we need to get this done in two years time. We don't want to get it done. We want to just continue telling stories. And that <laughs> sort of answers your original question. Where is it going? Um, I think it just needs to go in a direction that it remains enjoyable for us, because if it remains enjoyable for us, it's going to remain enjoyable for the viewer. And yeah. the enjoyable part for us is finding something quirky about where we're going, finding a different story and just trying to tell that story in a compelling way. Um, it's very rewarding. It's a rewarding process um, from the filming, the editing, the publishing, the promoting, the whole package ties into yeah. you know, being quite Obviously, rewarding. Yeah, this is where we're slightly different. So for me, right, I'm thinking year off work, buying a van, cataloguing every single disused station, getting crowdfunding in, if you will, whatever, you know, however you choose to fund it, kind of with your patrons, et cetera. And, and kind of literally, yeah, I'm going to smash this out. And then, but that's the difference between you and me, I think. At the end of that, I'd go, oh, I've, I've, I've done it. What am I now going to move on to? Whereas you're like, no, we want to share these amazing stories. And they are, you're, honestly, you guys are, are fab storytellers. And uh, you, yeah, you make, I don't know, bits of canal that I never really knew. Well, I knew existed, but I didn't know what they were for, I should say. Yeah. Uh, very, very interesting indeed. Uh, it, it's shook, isn't it? I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, the whole taking a, I love the concept of that. I love the whole, right, let's do four months or let's do uh, you know, completely nothing else but this. I, I think it would just stress me out too much in terms of like, how do I get this into a, a nice editable, presentable video? And I, I, I wouldn't have a clue because yeah. invariably you just kind of wing the edit or I wing the edit. I make I film clips and I've got a rough idea of what I want to talk about. But if it's not a scripted video, we'll just kind of wing the edit and just see how it comes out. But I, yeah, the whole doing it in one go would just stress my head <laughs> and, and there will there's always a trade-off what you get on an amazing adventure as you say you may lose in kind of editing or something or family Maybe, life yeah. or, or whatever, <laughs> income or whatever you know living day to day so stuff like that right paul i think we're going to stop there because um i don't want to give all your stories away but we're going to come to digital circus life we wish matt well in the uh, maze that is ikea southampton yeah i hope he's picked up a bargain from a uh, bargain bucket corner as emily and i call it <laughs> um um, what was going to say, so Digital Circus Live, 18th of May uh, coming up, we have six keynote speakers who are there to inspire and motivate and share their stories. We've got people like Mark Masters, who's going to be talking about building an audience. You know, Paul's talked about his audience and his community today, and Mark's going to be covering that. And we've got other people talking about branding on the keynote side, and Paul and Rebecca are going to be sharing their YouTube adventures with us and how exciting and stressful and everything else it's been for them. Um, in the workshops we've got 10 workshop hosts who are going to be showing you exactly how to do all this you know if you're wondering how to get started with podcasting or how to get started with youtubing we've got you covered you know we've got people talking about live streaming so fresh movement are going to be hosting a workshop talking about getting going on live streaming and how to do that and why you should do that so that's what's going on at digital circus live as well as some lunch options and some gin tasting and all the other fun stuff we want to put in the key parts are the learning that 
is there to help you and your business as you grow and move digitally, like I say, podcasting, branding. Uh, what else did I just say? YouTubing, live streaming, uh, photography, and everything else is going to be covered by our workshop hosts. Um, so I think we got, hold on, we have a comment, Paul. I missed that in the chat. Oh, oh Ricky Lock it. says good morning. Ricky Lock is a fellow keynote speaker of yours, and he's uh, going to be talking about a uh, a magical i had to think then a magical customer experience so yeah and and these are everything else these aren't just practical things we've got coming out as in podcasting we've got matt who's not here this morning he's gone a well um he's going to be talking about yeah what selling actually means in 2021 is selling still that dirty word are you still trying to work out how to get your head around how to sell in a small business and we know there are a lot of you who are and yeah ricky's going to be talking about magical customer experience that those next steps you can do to make your client just want to come back and talk about you, uh, which is something Emily and I talk about in the flywheel model as well. Yes. Um, right. Sorry. We've now got comments. Paul, we, I was wrapping up, but let me whip <laughs> through some comments because um, Ricky says an exciting event. Yes, Ricky, you're at it. Thanks, Alan. It's going to be such a value. It will. And I, and I don't think sometimes I get caught so much in the fun. I forget to talk about how valuable this is going to be. And it's £35 a ticket. And we've got everything you may need to be learning covered. You know, everything I've talked about. Um, I mean, yeah, going on that, Alan, that's what you said earlier about live streaming. That's a, that's a big thing for us in terms of how we tackle that because we would like to tackle it. But we haven't tackled it because I've no clue. Uh, you know, right. as someone with... 30,000 subscribers and a, a, a nice audience. No clue where to start with live streaming. So that's well, that's well let me share that, Paul. You, I know you won't mind me sharing this. So I sent Paul the link for StreamYard, and Paul came back and basically said, in a paraphrasing, what do I do with this? And, <laughs> and there's me thinking, Paul's got 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. He'd know how to do this. So, yep. you know, we covered it in a quick <laughs> voice message, and here he is. But abs absolutely, we, we presume people know how to do things because they can do X, Y, or Z, but it's they haven't learned that yet. So we have it all covered. Um, and there's a message. Hold on, where's my camera? Here that says, Matt apologizes. He has no signal like here. But he could send that message, Emily. He could send that message. <laughs> right. Um, so that's it. Uh, we're going to go. So I need to run through our banners because I love doing these. So on the Tuesday, 18th of May, we've got the Digital Circus Live and you can buy your £35 ticket and hear from Paul and be inspired and motivated by all of our keynote speakers and learn, obviously, and then go and learn those practical steps from all of our workshop hosts via buying a ticket at the digitalcircus.co.uk. And what last thing I need to cover in this kind of three minute sales pitch is, um, this is really important, this is a hop in, hop out event. This is not Zoom fatigue for eight hours straight. This event, we've got the schedule listed so you can pick out the topics that you want to watch specifically. You can have it running in the background as you're going around your day-to-day -day tasks. Um, you know, there, there's everything covered. And then what you've missed in the day because you didn't want to do your eyes in by looking at the computer, it's all going to be sent back out on replay. So then you can pick on the other ones you missed or the ones you watched and you found really valuable and you want to learn again from. So yeah, massively, massively important. But we cover that. Um, Paul, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure Thanks, having you along. And um, oh, can, Paul, I've been trolled. Can I just share this? Check this out. We've just oh had a massive trolling. Me. So uh, I'm going to remove it. It was on Facebook. <laughs> That's what we get for being uh, on public. I love it when we get trolled. It means we're doing something right. Yeah, I uh, completely um, agree. Completely agree. Yeah. So Fakumu Diabubi, I, I apologize if I pronounce that wrong. I'm, pre I'm really not trying to be uh, rude to you. It's just me trying to get the pronunciation right. Thank you for trolling us. Um, we're going to go and remove your comment <laughs> right now. But thank you so much for thinking of us this morning. Um, right. Have a day, great day. Paul, don't go away. Yeah, I'm going to stream and uh, see you all later. Bye.